Palataki is an impressive building with towers on its edges which made the locals give it this petted name. It is a two-storey and rectangular building and is considered a sample of eclectic architecture, the work of the architect Pietro Arrigoni, with strict symmetry and influences from Central European currents. On the east-west side, as well as in the centre, it has attics, while its footings are elevated for the sake of moisture protection. The balconies of the villa offer plenty of views of Liminaria, whilst from Palataki you can see the factory on the beach at Metalia. In order to approach Palataki and explore it, it is enough to walk from Liminaria on a short route, either from the main road or through the Spiedel footbridge. It is located in the wooded copse that surrounds it. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Palataki, small palace, as I've been baptized by the local residents because of my grand design. I was born in early 1900. You can consider me the most impressive of all the administration buildings of the Aegean Islands, one of the most important industrial monuments in the Mediterranean. My first owner, was Frederick Spiedel, owner of the Deutsches Mining Company, which came to Thassos to inaugurate the modern period of mining activity on the island. I've been the residence, housing the offices of the company, and I've gone through so glorious times. Since then, I've been watching from up here, Liminaria, the village, growing year after year. I've changed many owners and uses, following the controversial history of the region and contributing to its development, housing important daily events and celebrations. But in the late 1960s, the end of mining came and activity began to drop. I was looking from above the passing years, generations rolling one after the other, world changing faster and more and more crazy. I was sadly looking for a little attention, for a little life back inside of me. Since 1982, after continuous studies and ministerial decisions, I have been declared as a national monument and sometimes even attempted to be repaired. I felt such joy and relief. I dreamed that I would live again the glamour and the creativity of the past, but soon this relief stopped along with dreams. My disappointment for the people grew up, I felt more alone than ever, and the vandals came and plundered, destroying my decorations. The final end now to happen, against the international, European and national authorities, I've been underestimated to be cut off from the rest of the national monuments, being another victim of the economic measures imposed in Greece. But here I stand, wounded, restless, but proud. And you that have just seen these few words of mine, please think that you have the power to protect me and my history. My time is running out. Please hurry. Feel the value of what I represent to you and to future generations. As my only weapon in this battle, use my unique story, my artistic value. To raise your head one day, to look at me and not experience sadness. But may pride fill up your eyes with my ancient beauty.
Γεια σα! Είμαι ο πρώτο σταθμό τη διαδρομή σα στο μεταλλευτικό συγκρότημα Θάσου. Θα ήθελα να σα διηγηθώ την ιστορία μου και να σα εκμεστηρευτώ τα παράπονά μου, γιατί όλα αυτά τα χρόνια σα παρακολουθώ και απορώ αν όντω με γνωρίζετε και αν πραγματικά νοιάζεστε για μένα. Καταρχήν να σα συστηθώ. Το όνομά μου είναι Παλατάκι. Με βάπτισαν έτσι οι ντόπιοι κάτοικοι λόγω τη μεγαλοπρεπού κατασκευή μου. Γεννήθηκα στι αρχέ του 1900 και σχεδιαστή μου ήταν ο Ιταλό αρχιτέκτονα Πιέτρο Αριγκόνη. Με θεωρούν το πιο εντυπωσιακό από όλα τα κτίρια διοίκηση των νησιών του Αιγαίου. Με περιβάλλει ένα από τα σημαντικότερα βιομηχανικά μνημεία τη Μεσογείου. Αρχικό ιδιοκτήτη μου ήταν ο Γερμανό Σπίντελ, κάτοχο τη ομόνιμη μεταλλευτική εταιρεία, η οποία ήρθε στη Θάσο για να εγκαινιάσει τη σύγχρονη περίοδο τη μεταλλευτική δραστηριότητα του νησιού. Λειτουργήσα ω κατοικία, στέγασα τα γραφεία τη επιχείρηση και γνώρισα ένδοξε εποχέ. Από τότε παρακολουθώ από εδώ ψηλά το χωριό, τα λιμενάρια. Που δημιουργήθηκε χάρη στι δραστηριότητε που στέγασα. Άλλαξα πολλού ιδιοκτήτε και χρήσει, ακολουθώντα την πολυκύμαντη ιστορία του τόπου και συμβάλλοντα στην ανάπτυξή του. Στέγασα σπουδαία αλλά και καθημερινά γεγονότα, συνόδευσα και προκάλεσα τη φαντασία των παιδιών, αφού γράστηκα του έρωτε, τι πίκρε, του αγώνε και τι χαρέ των μεγάλων. Όταν τη δεκαετία του 60 ήρθε το τέλο τη μεταλλευτική δραστηριότητα, άρχισαν να με εγκαταλείπουν. Έμεινα να κοιτώ από ψηλά τα χρόνια να περνούν, τι γενιέ να διαδέχονται μία την άλλη, τον κόσμο να αλλάζει, να γίνονται όλα πιο γρήγορα και πιο τρελά. Καρτερούσα να μου δώσει κάποιο λίγη σημασία, να ξανανιώσω λίγη ζωή μέσα μου. Από το 1982, μετά από μελέτε και με συνεχεί υπουργικέ αποφάσει, με χαρακτηρίζουν διατηρητέο μνημείο. Κάποιε φορέ, μάλιστα, επιχείρησαν να με επισκευάσουν. Ένιωσα τέτοια χαρά και ανακούφιση. Φαντάστηκα ότι θα ζούσα ξανά την έγκλη και τη δημιουργικότητα του παρελθόντο. Οι εργασίε όμω σταμάτησαν, μαζί και τα όνειρα. Η απογοήτευσή μου για του ανθρώπου μεγάλωσε. Ένιωθα πιο μόνο από ποτέ. Με τόσου χωρί αντίκρισμα τίτλου, νιώθω σαν στρατηγό σε αποστρατεία που μου απονέμουν τιμητικά παράσημα, περιμένοντά με πότε να πεθάνω να καταρρεύσω. Έρχονται βάνδαλοι και με λιλατούν. Καταστρέφουν τι διακοσμήσει μου. Το τελειωτικό χτύπημα φαίνεται όμω ότι έρχεται τώρα. Κόντρα στι διεθνεί, ευρωπαϊκέ και εθνικέ αρχέ που διέπουν τα αρχιτεκτονήματα του είδου μου, υποτιμούν την αξία μου, θέλουν να με κόψουν από το υπόλοιπο μνημείο και να με καταστήσουν θύμα των οικονομικών μέτρων που επιβάλλουν στην Ελλάδα. Ωστόσο, εξακολουθώ να στέκομαι εδώ, λιγωμένο, ανήσυχο, αλλά περήφανο. Γι' αυτό, εσύ που ακού σήμερα όλα αυτά, σκέψω ότι έχει τη δύναμη να με σώσει και να με αναδείξει. Ο χρόνος μου τελειώνει. Βιάσου λοιπόν. Νιώσε την αξία μου για να προσφέρεις σε σένα και στις επόμενες γενιές. Σαν όπλος αυτή σου τη μάχη χρησιμοποίησε τη μοναδική μου ιστορία, την καλλιτεχνική μου αξία. Για να σηκώσει κάποια μέρα το κεφάλι σου, να με κοιτάξει και να μην νιώσεις λύπη αλλά περηφάνεια. Για να γεμίσεις από την ομορφιά μου. Thank you.
the extraction of mineral ores and its associated metal production has been a persistent element of the economy on Thassos Island since prehistoric times. As early as the Upper Paleolithic, around 20,000 years ago, ochre had been mined and used for painting. While early silver extraction is attested during the final Neolithic, early 4th millennium BC, copper production and alloying becomes an important activity in the coastal settlements of the island during the 3rd and 2nd millennia. The inception of iron metallurgy has been seen in association with copper smelting as confirmed by analyses on slag found in early Iron Age cemeteries. With the arrival of the Greek colonists around 650 BC, intensification in silver and gold extraction became paramount for further economic expansion. Metallia, Mining Processing Facilities. I am the second stop of the tour through the mining complex of Thassos. Specialists consider me to be one of the most notable European industrial monuments. I was founded by the German company Meinen Gestellenschaft Frederick Spiedel in 1903. The industrial complex consists of one, enrichment facilities with machinery for crushing, grinding, washing with seawater, mechanical separation grading and manual separation. The unit was capable of washing 300 tonnes of material per day. Two, smelting facilities with blast and puddling furnaces consisting of four cylindrical furnaces at a height of 6.5 metres which were capable of processing 20 to 22 tonnes of smithsonite, which is zinc spar, every eight hours, and four inclined furnace chambers with 12 metres length. Three, power facility with an electric power station supporting the operation of the machinery for preparing the raw material, pumping seawater for washing and the ore, and rotating the furnace. Four, three diesel engines, power 250, 160 and 25 horsepower respectively. Five, facilities for bagging the zinc oxide, ZNO, produced from roasting. Five, loading facilities in the right side of the coast, allowing the transloading of the material with transfer ships to bigger steamships capable of loading 3,000 to 5,000 tons of ore.
According to Wikipedia, calcination is also used to mean a thermal treatment process in the absence or limited supply of air or oxygen. Apply to ores and other solid materials to bring about a thermal decomposition. A calciner is a steel cylinder that rotates inside a heated furnace and performs indirect high temperature processing. 550 to 1150 degrees centigrade or 1000 to 21000 Fahrenheit within a controlled atmosphere. The history of the metallurgy factory of Thassos was turbulent. After being opened by the Germans, it only operated for almost a decade until the outbreak of World War I. In 1916, French troops were even stationed there, causing significant damage. However, in 1925, metallurgical work of a new company took over which gave the metallurgy factory a new lease of life, albeit short. It was the crash of the 1930s that this time put the brakes on industrial production. In 1933 to 1936, it reopened, as it did between 1950 and 1962, but for the last time. Since 1963, the metallurgy factory has been granted to the Greek state and since then no intervention or exploitation has taken place.
headquarters and office buildings of Speedle 1902 to 1914 and Sam 1925 to 1930. Speedle Bridge with Sam personnel. Directors and top employees of Sam. Furnaces with loading protection 1914. Early rebuilding. Rotary kiln plant for calcinating. Crooks and veils. Power generator with steam drive. Steam machine control system. Processed ore storage and loading pier railway left. Upright furnaces and loading railway. View of the SAM complex. Ore freighter in position, loading pier left. Loading ore from the complex. Concentrate loading crane on Metallia Pier. Luminaria from SS Estrella, December 1956. Ore freighter in position, loading pier left. Kaiki, towing a Mahone, 1958. Ship loading in the bay. Three ore freighters loading in 1957. Or freighter under steam.